Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity for us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. And you and I know that this fellowship and breaking of bread that we do regularly on this channel is the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, he said our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Jesus speaking as God man in John chapter 4, he said God is a spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. After the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus from the dead, Paul came speaking in Philippians chapter 3 in verse 3. Paul says that we born again believers in Christ Jesus, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and we put no confidence at all in the flesh. Now what all of that means is that born again believers in Christ Jesus are uh, the fulfillment of the Father's desire to have spirit worshipers. Praise God. Now quickly, let me, before I hit the ground running, I got to talk to you about this announcement. You know, a lot of people do not know we have, uh, we have a channel on YouTube and we have loads of teachings on YouTube that will be a blessing both to you and to lo your loved ones. You know, I'll be so glad, so grateful to God and I'll be so very encouraged. You know, if you go to YouTube, just type Apostle Victor James and press the subscription button. Those teachings are free. We're not charging for them. Because freely we are giving and freely we are giving them out. Amen. So please do. Go to YouTube. You know, type Apostle Victor James and press the subscription button. It will make me so very glad and encouraged. Thank you for doing so. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, let's hit the ground running. And you know, I won't start without me saying it again. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. You know, <clears throat> um, the, the, the more we understand Christianity, you know, the better, you, you know, how we are able to live, live out the life of Christ in us. Because a lot of things have been dumped, you know, on God's people that are not, that have no meaning in Christianity, you know, the, you know, but they are just outright human ideas, you know, what people think, what, you know, instead of what God says Christianity is all about. And because of all these other things, the true, to live the true life of a Christian, a child of God, believer in Christ Jesus, is becoming more and more very difficult for so many Christians, so many people. You know, so that's one of the reasons the Lord, I believe the Lord called me and raised me in this generation to help redirect everybody's focus to the truth of our life in Christ. You know, so we're going to be looking at something like that right now. All right. So let's start off with 1 Corinthians in chapter 7, verse number 19, NLT translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 19. Watch this. The Bible says, for it makes, no, no, 1 Corinthians uh, 7, 19. Am I right? Uh oh. It's like I, I wrote the wrong. Uh, 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 okay, yeah, you're right. Sorry. This is, it is. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19. It says, For it makes no difference whether or not a man has been circumcised. It makes no difference whether or not a man has been circumcised. The important thing is to keep God's commandments. It says, It makes no difference whether or not a man has been circumcised. You know, circumcision is um, a commandment that was given under the law to the Jews, you know, to Israel, 
It was not given to the Gentiles. It's not given to the rest of the world. You know, so circumcision is a religious practice that now represents, of course, it still represents circumcision, which is circum to be circumcised as male, as a male. But now circumcision represents religion. In today's context, it represents religion and religious activities. So the Bible said it makes no difference whether or not a man has been circumcised. He said the important thing is to keep God's commandment. So God is not interested in your too much activities. A lot of Christians have exchanged God's commandment for activities. That's what he's saying here. Activities, Christian activities. You know, there are all kinds of programs. If you go, and these things are, I'm sorry to say, but I gotta say it. Majority of these things were pushed by the churches in America because they want to retain their youths. They want to retain their teenagers. They want them to come to church. So they keep introducing all kinds of activities. Boot camp. This camp, that camp, you know, sometimes you go to church in America, you see somebody waving flag, you know, in front of the altar. They are, they are busy waving, waving flag. I'm, I'm like, what are you people doing? They have all kinds of sections for the children, for the youth, you know, uh, uh, teenagers class. You know, they, they, they've turned the church like into a secular world because they want to operate the church like the way the, the world is op operating you know let me give you an example of what i'm saying you go to church with your child you know as you are getting there they say they have a, a youth class children's class a, a teenagers class I, i'm not a, i'm not knocking those things i'm not knocking them i'm not against them you see but the truth is this Majority of those teachers in those children class or classes, teenagers classes, youth classes in, in church, that's why they don't bring them into the main, main auditorium. Majority of those teachers, some of them are not grounded in the truth of God's word. They do not carry the same unction and anointing that is on the senior pastor of the church. So you see, most of those children, they, they end up just going to church for social gathering. Because the impact of the, of the grace of God on the senior pastor is not transferred, it's not, in, it's not, it's not affecting, impacting those youth. You know, let me tell you this. If your teenager if your children can understand cartoon, when they watch cartoon on TV, if your teenagers, if your children can understand cartoon as they are watching cartoon on TV or on their phone or on their laptop or whatever, if they can understand those cartoons, believe me, they can understand the teaching that is coming from the pulpit, by, from the man of God. I'm telling you. And what we fail to recognize or understand is that these teachings, these teachings, remember, there is a spirit dimension to them. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 6, in verse 63, he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So there, there is a spirit dimension to the word of God. So it is not just a secular word. If your children can understand cartoon very well, listening and watching it, and begin to mimic those cartoon characters or heroes, believe me, they will definitely, and they can definitely, understand those teachings. You know, so, this is why you find that the majority of the, of the teenagers, youths in America, there's only one problem they have. It is rebellion. The spirit of rebellion has hit deep 
into American society and into their churches because they keep playing down the power in the word of God. And, and, and they are replacing the truth of God's commandment, God's word, with activities. In Nigeria right now, <laughs> it's a risk for you to go into the church and send your child away into one Sunday school class. Now, look at what, what is going on. They are kidnapping children in Sunday school classes. The other day, a Sunday school uh, a teacher, a, a female, is the one that kidnapped somebody's ch twins. You know, kidnapped the twins and took off to a different state with those twins. While service, Sunday service was going on. Look, let me tell you. <laughs> if I were to belong a member of a church, I will never send my children to any Sunday school class. I don't care. If you, if you can't allow me to bring my child into the hall and sit by me to listen to the same word and be impacted by the spirit of the same word, I'm going to get out of that church and look for another church. Uh, someone say, hey, BJ, you are too hard. Uh, this, that's not right. It's, it's, too, it's because of the noise. I will keep my child quiet. I will do everything to keep that child quiet in the hall so that the church is not, dis the man of God is not distracted when he's teaching. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, activities. The church is replacing the word of God, God's commandment, the truth of the word of God with activities. Activities. And they think that God is pleased with those activities. Look, as long as you keep replacing God's truth, God's word, God's commandment with activities, the devil will keep having his way in the church. You will see some women, when it's time to cook, they are awake. Once the church does not have ceremony or things to do that demands cooking, what, as soon as the man of God, the pastor wants to start preaching, they will doze off. They start sleeping. I'm telling you. They start sleeping. Because they are not actually heart circumcised. The truth of the word of God by the Holy Ghost has not gotten a hold of their heart yet. Their heart is far. Are you seeing what I'm saying? A lot of people do not have not learned to submit themselves to the word of God, to the, to the teachings, the truth, the commandments of God. Now, the Bible says what is most important is to keep God's commandments. That means it's more than one. Are you seeing that? To keep God's commandment. Now, what is this? What are these commandments of God? Look at Romans chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. NIV translation. Romans 13, 1, 3, verses 9 to 10. Look at it. Verse 9 says, Romans 13, verse 9. It said, the commandments. You see, under the Old Testament, God's commandments. God, God gave the children of Israel commandments. Um, the popular one everybody knows is the Ten Commandments. Of course, the commandments that were given to the children of Israel are over 600. Over 600 commandments. But the ones that are written on tablet that was handed over to them that Moses brought from that mountain, Mount Sinai, was Ten Commandments. And these Ten Commandments was not given to the world, to the rest of the world. It was given only to the Jews, Israelites. Are you seeing that? And the commandments was not actually given to them for them to live and triumph by. No. It is to reveal sin, the wrong that they are doing. Are you seeing that? So watch this. It says the commandments, that, those ten commandments, is referring to the ten commandments. It said the commandments, do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not covet. And whatever other commandment there, there may be. He said they are summed up in this, in this one rule. This one commandment. What is it? Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 10 says, put verse 10, my mom. Verse 10 says, love does, love does no harm. 
to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The fulfillment of all those ten commandments is love. So God said, look, in this New Testament, I don't want you to bother yourself about the ten commandments. Because I, this is Jesus talking that Paul quoted. You know, so the Spirit of God is saying, don't worry yourself about the Ten Commandments. Don't try to cram the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not co covet. Thou shalt not uh, do this. Shall... He said, don't worry yourself about it. He said, the commandment God has given to us right now as born again Christians, believers in Christ Jesus, the New Testament saints, is to love. You see, when you love, you will not covet, covet somebody else's thing. When you love, there will be no reason for adultery. When you love, there will be no reason to murder, to kill somebody. When you love, there will be no, you will not steal somebody's things. You won't take what does not belong to you. Are you seeing that? So, love is the commandment for the New Testament. Love is the commandment for the New Testament. So, whatever religious activity you are doing, if you are not loving, you have not started living. You have not started living the Christ life. You have not started living the life of God for you in Christ Jesus. You see, so that you are not that you are dressed in a particular way. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't mean you have come to start living the the Christ life, the Christian life. Until you begin to love. You know, there are some Christians that instead of loving, they give all their energy to their beret. So when they see somebody else that is not wearing beret or tying scarf, they are offended. They are angry. They are grieved. You see, in such people is no love. They don't know love. As a matter of fact, let me put it this way. They don't know God. That's why. I'm telling you. They don't know God. That, you know, there's a, particular, there's a particular denomination in Nigeria right now. There's a particular church, you know, in Nigeria now. They started with uh, scarf. Then they went into berets. You know, for the female, for the women. And then from beret, they now have baskets. They have all kinds of baskets now that they wear as hats, as cap to cover their hair. You know, the devil is so wicked. And he's, he's into doing everything possible to distract the church from Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. You, you see, once you go to those denominations, those churches, and you are not wearing scarf, or you are not wearing beret. You know, the beret is for the younger girls, but the dickness, the pastors, is scarf, is basket. They wear bas I call it basket, because it's nothing but basket. And then they think that those things they wear is what makes them righteous or closer to God. Or is what makes them accepted that they are living the God life. He says circumcision matters nothing. Performance matters nothing. Your appearance matters nothing in the absence of love. I know that this will vex them. I'm telling you because a lot of people, don't, don't, they don't want to hear the truth. The Bible said love is the commandment. Love is God's commandment for you and I in the New Testament. Let me show you some more before we run along. So, he says, love does, does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. You, you see, I, I remember my wife, um, my wife went to this particular church. The, the, the auntie's husband, you know, passed on. And so they are doing the burial, the church service for the auntie's husband. So my wife and her junior sister, you know, went for to the church for 
the service, what they call it, a way keep service or something, you know, or, or, you know, well, I don't want to take too much time on that. Just as they were entering the church, because my wife, you know, she's not used to wearing beret or basket. I won't even let her do for what for what? What are you wearing beret for? <laughs> what, how does it make how does it keep you closer to God? The people wearing beret, tying scarf, or wearing basket are having more challenges than us who are living by faith and walking in love. Are you seeing that? The devil does not have respect for your cap or your beret. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't wear those things. But when you now major on them, and then your heart, you begin to deal with people from whether they wear beret or not, basket or not, tie scarf or not, you are not walking in love. So as they go to the entrance of the church to enter, the usher stopped them. Apparently, the usher does not know my wife. Stop them and say, you are not, you, you don't have cap on. You are not covering your head. And my wife looked and said, we don't know you, you know, you, you look for cap or scarf before somebody can come into the church in this place. But sorry, we're just here for the burial thing. He said, no, no, you can't enter. You need, you must go and look for scarf. You must go and cover your head fair before you can enter. You, you, you see, that usher is not made perfect in love. What if that person is not born again? What of that is a soul that the Holy Ghost is bringing to be saved just before the person dies? Are you seeing what I'm saying? These people are blind. That's what the scripture says. Anybody who does not walk in love, I'm going to show you. First John chapter 4 says the person is blind. They are blinded. What of if that person just have one second to come into the church, hear the truth about the gospel of Christ, and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, so that when the person dies, the person goes to heaven. No, this person, look, this person's problem is scarf, tying of the head. You know, I would have been born again years before I got born again. I would have been born again like 12, 10 years before I finally got born again. I was invited by a brother to a particular church. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to mention this thing anyway. You know, you have only two options to love me or not. You know, it's Deeper Life Church. You know, a brother invited me those days. That then I was into the world. I was not saved. I was into disco dancing and, you know, all kinds of things. You know, and I used to wear jerry coy. You know, uh, I wear t shirt and jeans and my sneakers, canvas, if you want to call it. You know, I, I remember then I used to have uh, uh, stone. I used to have these punk things on. You know, so this brother kept coming all the time to our house to evangelize me, to talk to me about, you know, church, you know, blah, blah, blah. So finally I said, okay. This, you know, because I, I, I tried to shake him off. I tried to drive him away, but he won't go. He won't let go. So finally I told him, I said, next Sunday I'll follow you. I was, I was tired of, just to get rid of him. Finally, I followed him. We got to the church. Just at the door of the church, about six people rushed me. He said, infidel. They, they said, infidel. You know? Unholy things. They, they were using all kinds of ter terms. I was so scared because I didn't go with any of my family, none of my friends. And this brother, I, I, I hardly knew him. He was just coming for evangelism. Fear gripped my heart. The way they rushed me. Some, just now, somebody had gone to bring scissors. They were going to scissors my hair. Cut my hair for me. I grabbed his hand. I said, what are you doing? They, you know, another one grabbed my uh, stud that I was wearing. My stud that I was wearing. He grabbed it. He was, I said, what is this? He, I was so scared. I thought these guys were going to kill me. He, you know, they say, they say this is the devil. The, 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 we must remove the devil. <laughs> You know, I, I struggled and fought with them in front of the entrance of the church. And the pastor is preaching. I was fighting. I fought with them, with everything within me. And then, somehow, I escaped. As I was running, I kept telling myself, I will never in my life step my feet into any church. Till the day I die. Can you imagine what those, the devil used those people to do to me? An apostle of Jesus Christ. Jesus is looking. 
Let my apostle enter your church. Let him come and accept me as Lord and Savior. So that I can start the ministry I've called him for. These people became an hindrance. Are you seeing that? Love is the fulfillment of the law. You cannot go wrong walking in love. My, my mom put this in Galatians chapter 5, in verse 6, NIV translation. This NIV translation, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Watch this. The Bible said, In Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. Neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. Performance, trying to perform for God, trying to look righteous, trying to look like you are very holy. You are not wearing earrings. You know, uh, uh, you, you don't wear trousers. The Bible says it has no value. It has no value. It is yours. You are just entertaining yourself. It has no value. If, or you say, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. He said, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love what counts is your love your love your love into your love your love are you seeing what i'm saying love your love azugabada ye gradosa god's command excuse me god's commandment in the new testament for all his children is to love what counts is love. Is to love. The reason most people go to church today is because they want to kill somebody. They want somebody to die. And that person, quote and unquote, is called their enemy. The person you want to pray that God should kill, that person might be the next apostle, the next pastor, the next, the next prophet, the next bishop. Are you seeing what I'm saying? What God wants is the reason the enemy is triumphing over you is because your heart is not being exercised in love. I'm going to show you. You will see. Your heart is not being exercised in love. Why do you think there are divorces going on everywhere now? It's because somebody is not, somebody's heart is not exercised in love. Any heart where there is love, there will be no divorce in that, in that place. Jesus said, God, God hates divorce. They said, but Moses gave us permission to divorce. He, he said, because of the hardness of your heart. Somebody's heart is hardened. He doesn't want to listen to the commandments. He doesn't want to listen to God's word. That's why they are divorcing. It might be both partners or just one person. Are you seeing what I'm saying? If both partners allow the love of God to flow from their heart, there will be no divorce. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, in these last days, the devil's attack, attack system, according to God's word, the devil's attack system eh, is that the love of many will wax cold. What does that mean? It's, it's not that they don't have love. They have it. He said, but that love will wax cold. That means their love will be overwhelmed, defeated. So we are living in a time, in a generation, where people are allowing the devil to use all kinds of things to weaken their love, to paralyze their love. You know, just the other day, I said in, in one of my teachings, as in my broadcast, I said, we, then we didn't have to buy camera. We wanted to buy camera. So I said, you know, I came and, and said here, I said, please, we need to buy camera. Those of you that can send us or give us money, help us, you know, with whatever amount. I think I mentioned a couple of amounts that you can give to us to help us to buy the camera. Please do. You know, there's a pastor, you know, that saw my teaching. I think, I, apparently he was watching. I didn't know him before. I've never met him. You know, I didn't know him before. He sent me a message. In, not privately. He sent it to me on the on this Facebook thing, like you are, you are watching me now, in that comment se uh, se uh, session, section. 
He sent me a message. And then was using all kinds of words against me. You know, he called me a fool. He said, I'm stupid. He said, God did not call me. If God had called me, I would not ask people to help me to get camera. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you see what I'm saying? The heart of these people do not know. Their experiences has rendered the love of God in their heart weakened, useless. The Bible said, when you have something in your possession and a brother comes to ask you, don't tell him to go and come back tomorrow. He said, make sure you give that thing to him today before he leaves you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Okay, let's say I've even done something wrong. Shouldn't he have sent me a message out of love and said, hey, VG, don't ask people for money. I'm going to help you to get it. He, he did, he, he said all kinds, I mean, he said all kinds of, kinds of things. He says, when we finish, I saw his comment. I just deleted it. I didn't want to bother myself. I now traced him back on Facebook, went to his page, went to his mes uh, messenger. I left a message there for him. I said, Pastor, um, bless you. You know, I said, thank you for the message you sent to me. I said, don't worry about it. You know, we'll still get the camera. Do you know, it was three days later, people send us money. As a matter of fact, the camera came forth. So I, I remember somebody sent me a message and said, and said to me, sir, how much is it? He said, your teaching has blessed me so much. How much is the camera? Because I want you to remain, you know, I, I, you know. I, so I came, I announced the amount, and then, voila, the camera is here. You, you see, when people don't know the truth, their ignorance makes them play the fool. Egwege. When they don't know the truth, their ignorance makes them play the fool. So they become foolish in their actions and words. Are you seeing that? God does, is not interested. I'm about to say something again. Jesus, have mercy on me. Before they said, hey, that was heavy. You see, God is not interested in your too much prayer. Fasting. Or night VG in the absence of love. I'm not knocking prayer. Then am I knocking fasting? I'm not trying to discourage you from praying. Look, love. The Bible said in First John chapter 4, verse in verse 8. My mommy put it in King James, please. First John chapter 4, in verse 8. He says. He said, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Don't you get it? L anybody who does not love, the, the word who does not, actually, uh, he that loveth not, what he's trying to say actually in the right translation, is that if you do not allow love to flow from you, it is because your knowledge in growth about God is still limited. It's still small. It's still little. It's still babyish. God is love. There is no other way you can express God outside of love. You can't express God through miracle. Because anybody can do miracle. The devil can do miracle. Are you seeing what I'm saying? But the devil lacks the capacity to love. Ooh. whatever the devil does for a person he will use another hand to collect something bigger from that person it is God that can truly love because God is love so all these performances God is not interested in them you love and see how God will show up for you I'm telling you you need to learn to love that is the highest level of walk with God. The highest level of walk with God in, as a Christian is love. It is not um, speaking in tongues. It is not reading and quoting Bible. It is not early morning prayer. It is love. Do you know if there is anything the devil will challenge, there are two things the devil will challenge. 
in the life of a child of God is love and faith. Love and faith. He doesn't care about your prayer because the devil knows that James says you can pray and pray and miss. That's why people are praying they're not seeing results. You can keep praying from now till tomorrow and never, God will never answer those prayers. Because you can pray and miss, but you cannot love and miss. The Bible says all the law is fulfilled in, in, in love. All the laws of God, is, they are fulfilled in love. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, in NLT translation, let me show you something. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, watch this. The Bible said, um, chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 22, chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch. He said, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What kind of fruits? Look at the first fruit. Love. Are you seeing that? God punish the devil. Are you seeing it? The fruit the Holy Spirit produces in our life as regenerated beings, redeemed beings, the royal priesthood that we have, that we are, holy nation, peculiar person or people that we are, is love. Watch verse 23. Put verse 23 quickly. Verse 23 says, watch you. He, the Holy Spirit produces love in our heart. Watch. He says, there is no law against these things. There is no law against love. You can never walk in love and go wrong. That's what he's saying. You can never be wrong in walk by walking in love. You can never be wrong. Nobody ever goes wrong walking in love. Nobody. You can't. It's not possible. I'm telling you. There is no law. Nobody can curse you. Walking in love. No, no devil, no demon, no evil spirit can hinder your progress. Your destiny cannot be upturned. Your health cannot be damaged. Cannot be tampered with. Walking in love. He, he said there is no law. There is no law against walking in love. Living by love. No law. What? Okay, wait. Let me show you some more. Because I'm feeling this thing now. Glory be to God in heaven. Look at it. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, verse 4 to 7. GNT translation. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 13, verses 7, verses 4 to 7. Let me show you this. Look at it. GNT. Put GNT, please. Verse 4 to 7. Watch. Look at this. He says, Love is patient and kind. Are you seeing this? It is not jealous or conceited, boastful. That's the meaning of boastful or proud. You can't find that. But there are so many people in churches today. These are the things they exhibit. They can jealous each other. Uh, see, 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 see that sister. Say, do you notice the way she's walking today? She wants us to know that she just, she's wearing a new skirt, a new blouse. And that, that blouse, I, I know that blouse. I know how the amount, I know how much they said that blouse. Look at inside church. See, see, see pastor's wife. See, see, did you did you notice pastor's wife today? Just because she wore she, she wore a new necklace today. Ne necklace. A new necklace. Because she wore a new necklace today. She, she won't let us see you. Every time she wants to hold a microphone. She wants to hold a microphone. See, see jealousy. See envy inside church. Verse 4. I mean verse 5. Put verse 5. God punish the devil. He said, Love is not. Heal mannered. You can't tell me you have love. You went to a fast food restaurant. You went to Mr. Biggs. Or Tasty Fried Chicken. Or Chicken Republic. Or you went to uh, an hotel. Sheraton Hotel. Hilton Hotel. And somebody is at the door. A security guy or a greeter. Somebody is at the door. That opens the door for you to enter. You can't look at the person with smile in your face and say... Thank you. So, some people will look down on them. Is that, your, is that not your duty? Is that not why you are paid? As if they are less human beings. It's because the devil has used occasion to weaken God's love in your heart. The love of God is weakened. And then after a while, you start having all kinds of terrorizing dreams. All manner of things are chasing you in the dream. You find yourself being beaten by Ogbanje. You are taken to uh, 
covens of witches and wizards. The Bible said, once you are walking in love, there is no law against it. If it's the law of marine spirit, it can't work against you. If it's the law of demonic wickedness, it can't work against you. If it's the law of death, it can't work against you. If it's the law of setback, it cannot. Whatever satanic law, whatever the law, it cannot prevail against the person who is walking in love. Now watch verse 6. Oh, yabadagadagaya. Watch verse 6. He said, love is not happy with, em with evil. He said, but it's happy with the truth. Verse 7. Watch verse 7. Amanayada. Verse 7 says, love never gives up. And it's faith, hope, and patience never fails. That means love will never fail. Love doesn't fail. Does not fail in protection. You will be protected as long as you are walking in love. You will be protected. You will be protected. Now, just now, you are angry. You are offended. Because you have money and you are one of the people who are financially helping your church. You are financially helping. You are giving. God has blessed you with resources, with money. Therefore, once pastor preach something and then you don't like what the pastor is preaching, you withhold your money back. When they say they want to do something in the church, you don't bring out money anymore. Where is the love of God? You don't know God yet. Such a person does not know God yet. You have no clue. You have no idea. I mean it. You have no idea. You see, quickly, let me say this to everybody. You know, I try to say... I, I try, I, I, I tried to say it the last time on our last um, episode, you know, broadcast. No born again believer is expected, is told rather, to expect to be loved. Let me see how I wrote it down here, so, so that I can, I can, so that I won't forget the, the way I wrote it down here. Thank you, precious Jesus. Wait, I, I wrote, I, I wrote, I wrote something down here. Let me. Is it? I wrote here. I said that you are walking in love does not mean you will always get to be loved in return. So to help free you from the burden of being disappointed by others. As you love them, they are not loving you. For, for you to not to be disappointed or carrying the weight, the pain of that disappointment. Guess what? There is nowhere in the word of God, in the Bible, where God says you should expect to be loved because you are walking in love. No, nowhere. There is absolutely nowhere. God said you should expect to be loved because you are walking in love. You know what that means? Because you love me. Let's say you love me now. The Bible said, or God says, that, I mean, there's no way God says, you should expect that I should love you back. Of course, it is naturally moral. If you love me, I should love you. But the Bible didn't say that if you love me, you should expect me to love you back. That's why the devil is using the failures and the disappointment of not being loved back to weaken the love of believers in the church amongst ourselves. You see, God's word is that I should love you. He didn't tell me to expect you to love me back. So as long as I'm, as I am, as long as I'm not expecting love back from you, but I know and understand that my obligation, my responsibility towards you is to love you. I can never be disappointed by you. I will never come under the burden, the weight of the pain of disappointment of you're not loving me. Are you, can you, are you understanding this thing? Now, let me show you. Let's see whether what I said is right. In Luke chapter 6 verse 35, HCSB translation. My mommy put HCSB translation. Luke chapter 6, 
Verse 35. You, you know, this is why you see that a lot of people commit suicide. Oh, but the way I love him. Oh, I love him so much. I love him so much. He didn't love me. Look at what he did. He just disappointed me. Threw my love away. That's why people are killing themselves. That's why the devil is taking advantage of people. And that is why a lot of people do not want to love anymore. And as long as you refuse to love and walk in love, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Look at what this is Jesus talking in Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Look, see, look at Jesus. This is not my idea. It's not my opinion. Look at it. He said, but love your enemy. Jesus is talking to the, to the people. Love your enemies. They are your enemies. They hate you. They don't like you, but Jesus said, love them. Woo! He said, do what is good to them. And learn. Give to them. Even if they ask you, give them. Expecting nothing in return. Yay! See Bible. You know, I must tell you, I was born for this thing. I have never in my entire life heard love preached or taught like this. The Lord came and spoke these things to me. I said, Lord, you got to show you have to show me scriptures for this. I can't just go and say this. You have to show me scriptures. He said, the Lord made me to understand that the reason people are wounded, Christians, his children, his people are wounded, sometimes so badly damaged beyond quote and unquote repair emotionally, is because they are expecting to be loved. The only love you need, you have. Woo, Egwe. I don't know whether you got that. The only love you need to meet you at the point of your emotional, spiritual, and physical need, you have it. And guess what that love is? It's the love of the Father. The love of God. You got it. That's the only love you should expect. The love from God. Emenaya, Egulabadaga. And you have it already. You are not going to have it. You have it already. So, the love from somebody else is not a requirement. It's not something you should expect. You should learn to be satisfied with the fact that God loves you. He loves you so much. Jesus died for you. He gave his life. He said, greater love than this has no man. So, if all the love you will ever need, God poured out on you and I in Christ Jesus. He said, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed, lavished on us. Behold, what manner of love. Look, the Father's love for you is too deep. The Spirit of God is speaking through me to somebody right now. Glory be to God. He said, you need to come to the depth, the height, the width, and the breadth of the love of God that surpasses all knowledge. His love for you is, God's love for you is too deep. God loves you so much. He handed over his only begotten son, his only son. His, his, Ayada, he gave his son for you. That's the depth of his love. You have no right to, to expect love from anybody because all the love you will ever need to sustain you in this world has been given to you by God through Christ Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Hallelujah. Woo! You know, the Holy Ghost just told me. Now, he said, my son, you are doing well. He said, continue. Jesus is telling you through me, you have all the love that you need. It is where you lose focus of the love of God, the love of the Father for you. Yeah? That is when you begin to expect, demand, love from man to fulfill you. And you are exposing yourself to pain. Jesus said, look at it. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. He said, but love your enemies. Love them. 
They are not going to, the reason is your enemy is because it's not going to love you back. Enemies don't love you. He said, but you love your enemy. Love them. Give it to them. Don't expect it back from them. Don't expect it back. Just love them. Abalayaga, esuka, brediaga, suta. And then I'm going to talk about it. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor, don't be discouraged. About that, your church member that you have spent time praying for, you stood with, laying hands on them, believing God to prosper them, to increase them, to raise them. And now that things are started looking good for them, they moved out to another church. Don't, 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 don't let it knock you down. Don't let it stop you from walking in love. Keep walking in love. Keep walking in love. You know why? You know why I said that? Because at a point, I asked the Lord, I will just keep loving like that? You know, there's a point a man gets to. He will just break down. The Lord said, no, no, no. The reason you break down is because you don't understand that as long as you are walking in love, you, do, you think all you just have to do is walk in love and I'll leave you at that. The Lord said to me, he said, no. I said, Lord, you have to show me that. Then he said to me, he said, read it again. So you and I read, let's read it again. <laughs> I love to teach about Jesus. He said, but love your enemies. Do what is good and learn. Expecting nothing in return. Watch you. Then your reward. Egwe. He said, your reward will be great. Yay. I finally found it. I found it. Why lie, I found it. Because a lot, of, a lot of my church members have done me evil. I, is it the one that I spent my labor to send to school, went to university, after that got married, only to now, af after graduation, now get a job, leave the church and start going to somewhere else, because whether I said something or I did something, are you seeing what I'm saying? I mean, what can be painful to a pastor than that? But he said, keep loving. You know, in my own secret, in my own private secret, out of the pain of such disappointment, I could start cursing such person that it's not going to be better for you. It will not be well with you. Look at the, you know, because out of pain. But Jesus said, keep loving. Not because you should just love, keep loving, you know, keep loving into oblivion. No. He said there is a reward. Once that thing happens and you maintain your love, that is when you will be rewarded. He said, and the reward will be a great reward. You will be rewarded for not stopping yourself to continue to love. You will be rewarded. Love them. Don't wish them evil. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Your husband did some terrible things and left home. Abandoned you and the children. Don't hate him. Love him. God will reward you. And he said the reward will be a great reward. You will be amazed. <laughs> when he starts, re when the reward begins to manifest, Aya, Egulebe, Edeyende, Esuka, Gagadaya. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you will be amazed. Your boss is maltreating you, melting out all kinds of evil, pain, emotional torture against you, you know, for no just cause. He, he said, You love him. Just keep, maintain, don't wish him evil, keep loving him. The reward might be that you will eventually become his boss. We have seen it in Nigerian politics. When Fashola was the governor of Lagos State, Nigerian Vice President Oshibajo was a commissioner under, uh, Bolati, um, under uh, 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 Fashola. He was a commissioner. Fashola was his boss. The commissioner of justice in Lagos is now the vice president of Nigeria. Guess what? Fashola is a minister under him now. 
keep loving. <laughs> keep loving. You know, there's a part of the scripture that I used to call women ministers preaching. Preach Hey man and Mordecai in the book of Esther. Women like to preach about Esther a lot, you know, from the book of Esther. Mordecai, uh, uh, hey man, we were, were as, as blessed as he was. The high, he was among the high, highest hierarchy of their land in authority, in government. Yet he's jealous. Of a commoner. And then wish to do him evil. But guess what? Mordecai never planned evil against Haman. Eventually the reward came. Mordecai was exalted. Haman hung on the same gallop that he planned for Mordecai. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He said, great will be your reward for walking in love. Just keep, maintain it. Keep walking in love. Keep walking in love. There's a reward. In Psalm 103 verse 6, NLT translation, Psalm 103 verse 6, the psalmist said the same thing. In Psalm 103 verse 6, NLT translation. Watch this. Keep loving. Keep that love going on. There will be a reward. This God will never fail. Look at NLT translation. Quickly, sharp, sharp. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Who is there to, to put it? You put quickly, quickly, because time is going. 103 verse uh, 6. 103 verse 6. Psalm 103. 103. Verse 6. All right. He said, the Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. God gives righteousness and justice. He gives, he makes things work right. He makes things work right without complication to those, to everyone who is treated unjustly. He will eventually make things work right. I'm telling you, he will reward you. The Lord God Almighty will reward you. Just keep walking in love. It doesn't matter how you feel. You owe everybody love. You gotta love. You must love. You should love. That's what God expects of you. Keep walking in love. Don't stop. The devil will use anything and everything to come against your love. But don't let him. The Bible said in Romans chapter 13, in verse number 8, NLT translation, he said, Oh, nothing but love to everybody. Oh. Look at it. Oh, nothing to anyone. Oh, nothing to anyone. Except Balagadi Yanga Sotaba. Oh, nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love. It's an obligation. Love. Love. Don't let your neighbor know you as a warrior. Let them know you as a lover. Let love flow through you. Let anybody that comes in contact with you know you as a lover. Love. I got to stop because I see I have so many things to, to push out here. Glory be to God in heaven. You know? I got to stop. Even between husband and wife, love. Between parents and children, love. Between boss and workers, love. Why will you want... Okay, let's take, for example, husband and wife. Why will you want to deprive 
your husband sex. The reason is because love is tampered with. Why would you want to deny your wife sex? Anywhere there is love, anywhere there is love, ah, that atmosphere comes to experience only God. That's what that atmosphere will experience. God. And don't tell me, eh, AVJ, please pray, let God increase my love. Let God give me love for my husband. Let God give me love for my wife. Let God give me love for my children. That, that's, there's no prayer like that because God will not answer such prayer. There's no prayer like that. That's uh, the work of ignorance. You know? I, the question is, are you born again? If you are born again, God has given you love. You have love. So let's look at that. Maybe I'll close with that. Let's look at that. In Romans chapter 5. Thank you, precious Father. Verse 5, GNT translation. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Look at this. GNT, put GNT, please. All right, look at it. He said, this hope does not disappoint us. For God has poured out. God has poured out. What did he pour out? His love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit who is God's gift to us. Don't pray that God should give you love because you will be coming against the truth of the scripture. God has, the day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God poured his love into you. Are you seeing that? So you have love. You have, you, you, you don't only have love, you have the capacity to love. You don't only have the capacity to love, you have the ability to love in the face of hatred, of wickedness. You have it. The ability to love, because that's why the Holy Ghost is inside of you. To empower you to love. So just tell him, Holy Spirit, I, 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 respond, I yield to you. Empower me to love with this love that is in my heart. Are you seeing that? You need to love. Love is the fastest way to be healed. To heal anything. To mend fences. Broken things. I'm telling you. It is because of lovelessness that there is so much poverty. So much hunger. Because one man wants to steal the money that is meant for all of us. One man goes to steal from pension fund. The, the pensioners, their money. 14 billion naira. And then he goes to hide the money in one house in his village. Another one goes to hide the stolen money in the, in, the, in the grave. Put it inside coffin. And then go and dig a grave and bury the thing there. Can you see? There is no love. The money that is meant to build hospitals for, for, for the common man, for the poor. One man goes to steal the money and then takes it to Dubai to go and buy a house. And send his own children there. Or send his children to Canada or America or London. Buy a house for them. And send them to university abroad. That's why universities in Nigeria is not working. Aswa has been on strike for God knows how long. There is no love. And yet these people say they are Christians. When you see them pray here. Every power that is against me, against my family, it will not prosper. Send back to the sender, back to the sender, back to the sender. That's why God is not listening to them. Hypertension is killing them. They are dropping dead now. The money they are not enjoying, their children are becoming wayward, rebellious and wicked at heart. Now they are children. I, I, I even heard the other day, most of these men, they are children that they send abroad to go and, you know, 
uh, with all this stolen money, they sell their children abroad. Now their children don't want to come back to Nigeria. They don't want to come and live in a Nigeria where they are kidnapping people, where they are killing people, where there is Boko Haram, all kinds of insurgency. So the, the houses, these men have stolen money to build. Now when they die, other people are inheriting those houses. Because their children don't want, they don't want to come to Nigeria to come and live. They don't want to stay in Nigeria. They are afraid of coming. The terror of the evil of their parents is terrorizing and driving them away from Nigeria. Are you seeing what I'm saying? There is no love. If there is love, if there is love, why will you alone want to steal all the money? Why will you a minister, minister of health, there's a group of doctors, Nigerian doctors, uh, wants to bring foreigners to come and start medical, free medical treatment with millions of dollars for people in villages, in rural areas. You, you, you don't want to sign the document because you are expecting them to give you a, a, a court. They are, you are expecting them to bribe you. Minister of, uh, uh, what do I call it? Um, Minister of Health, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. The day you die, you will give account to God. Minister of Health, Minister of Transport, Minister of Housing, Minister of Power. That's why there is no electricity. All kinds of trillions of Naira has been invested into power in Nigeria. Yet there is no electricity, no power. Because people are sharing the money among yourselves. Electric will soon shock you. Watch. You will soon be electric. Uh, uh, <laughs> Somebody say, hey, BG, are you not supposed to love them? I love you. That's why I'm warning you. The Bible says we love every man. So we warn them. We are warning every man because of the danger that is coming. So out of love, I'm warning all of you right now. You know, bribe and so destroy these people. And yet they are the one that, are, that is doing fasting. Yet they are the one that is going for night vigil. That is going for Holy Ghost night. They are all thieves. The reason Nigerian military does not have enough ammunition. You know, look at the boys that are sent to go and fight insurgents. You know, Boko Haram, all those terrorists. These boys don't have correct boots to wear. No uniform. Nigerian police, look at Nigerian police. When you see a policeman on the road, you, you cry. Because he has to buy his uniform by himself. You know, look at their barracks. It looks like, it looks so tattered. It, it look at, when a, how will a policeman be able to, you know, because his psyche is already defeated. His psyche is, look at their barracks. Look at how it looks like. Because the, the policeman, the police boss, has stolen all the money. You know, they are sharing the money among themselves. Don't worry. You are, you are feeding yourself fat for your day of slaughter. That's what the scripture says. You are feeding yourself fat for your day of slaughter. Those men stand under the sun, under the rain, doing a good job, but you are there in the office stealing and sharing the money. Unless you are bribed, you will not sign the document that is given to you. Don't worry. Your day is coming. Your time is coming. But remember, the Father, God said, vengeance is his. Vengeance is the Lord's. We owe you love. That's why we are saying this truth to you. We are teaching you this truth. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will find grace to open your heart, to turn, to repent, to change your mind, and do the right thing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you. I sincerely pray because you don't know what is waiting for you on the other side. I'm telling you, you don't know. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Only to lose his own soul. Only for him to lose his soul. Look at Ab Abacha, the former head of state of Nigeria. Abacha stole and stole and stole and stole. The day he took his last breath, Abacha did not take anything with him. Now he's gone into eternal judgment. He's gone for judgment. The cry of the poor. The Bible said he comes before the Lord. And he avenged them. He, av he fights for them. Don't go head to head with God. Don't do it. Learn to be satisfied with what you have. The little you have is enough. You alone want to have houses everywhere in the world. How, what, who bewitched you? Who lied to you? Who deceived you into thinking you should do that? You know, go to our hospital. Pregnant, pregnant women are dying with their babies. Women are delivering babies and dying because Somebody has stolen all the money they are supposed to use to buy whatever needs to be bought in that hospital, in that public hospital. Where is your conscience? Where is your heart? 
Where is your love? Where is your love for humanity? Where is your human, human love for each other? Oh God, have mercy. You know, I pray that God will help you. Take away that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. May God give you a heart of flesh. May God give you a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Well, this is where we end the broadcast. But we're not going to end without asking you to give. In the name of Jesus. Take up an offering. You know, let the love of God flow from your heart. Don't give out of grudge or hatred or bitterness. Give out of love. You know, I need you to support us financially. So that we can keep doing the work of God. So that we can keep sharing this gospel. Everybody share this gospel. Share this message. Let it go around. Let it go viral. You know, let all those ministers, counselors, local government chairman, all of them sharing the money. Let it go around. Let it go around. Father, thank you for everybody that is giving right now. I'm praying for you. If you want to give, please use your phone. Do a transfer. Send us offering. Tight. You know, help us financially. We need money. So as to be able to keep bringing this thing. You know, it, it, these teachings and, you know, broadcasting it costs money. You know, you know how much diesel is now. You know how much a liter of diesel is right now. You know, help us. You know what it takes to maintain generator so that power does not go out. Help us. Send money, you know, to, to us to keep this thing going. And the Lord bless your giving in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for everyone that is giving right now. Thank, thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to the heart of your people in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to give, if you are in Nigeria, please use Zenith Bank, 1001-488-167. Or you can use our access bank, 1433373574. Or you can use our guarantee trust bank in Nigeria, which is 001-686-4121. If you are outside of Nigeria and you want to give, wherever you are in the world, you can use our international giving platform, Guarantee Trust Bank. And the SWIFT code is GTBINGLA. The dollar account is 001-686-4145. The Great British Pound account is 001-686-4169. The Euro account is uh, 001-686-4179. God bless you. Thank you for giving. I'm expecting to hear from you right now. Do it. Give right now. And God bless you for giving. In Jesus' precious name. Well, this is AVJ. I love you. And I'm signing out. In the name of Jesus. Bye-bye.